Well, thank you, uh, uh, President Herbs, and thank you for that introduction and for the leadership of the University of Connecticut. Uh, thanks to the Board of Trustees and all the administration and faculty to your, for your hospitality, and welcome to all the family and friends here today. I must confess that it's really uh, fun to receive an honorary degree because you just don't have to do that much to earn one. Uh, you've all worked your butts off. You've achieved academic excellence, shelled out a ton of money. Me, I showed up today at noon, and I'm out of here by 4 p.m., and <laughs> voila, I'm Dr. Immelt. Actually, I did have to answer one question to receive my degree. Who has the world's best women's basketball team? You know? I got that one right, hence the doctorate degree. You should cut me some slack, however, despite my lack of hard work, it might be handy to have the CEO of GE as your commencement speaker. I know it sounds kind of boring at first. Some of your friends might have gotten Oprah or President Obama or Bono, but look at the bright side. It was easier to get your family a ticket. <laughs> Beyond that, at GE, we hire thousands of college graduates every year. At least that got your parents' attention. And I could sell you a jet engine or a locomotive or even give you a dishwasher, that might help. But I'm probably the only person in the room today that was actually played by Alec Baldwin on TV. <laughs> so on the NBC TV show 30 Rock, it's not that I mind being made fun of, it's good to be able to laugh at yourself every once in a while. But every time I come to an event like this, I hear the same thing. Jeff Immelt is our commencement speaker. I only wish we got the real Jack Donahue. <laughs> it's okay, I'm used to it by now. I could have a lot more advice from 30 Rock, but I'll save you that. Instead, to all of you that earned your degrees today, congratulations. Let me say first and foremost, yours is a great accomplishment, and it's a great privilege for me to be able to here to share this special day with you. Not surprisingly, GE shares several bonds with you in this university. First, both GE and UConn's histories dates back to the late 1800s. Among our employees, we already count 600 UConn grads. We've had two vice chairmen that you were fellow alums, as well as multiple senior executives. More than 200 of our employees have advanced degrees from UConn. And beyond that, we have many other connections that are quite important. One that I'm particularly proud of is GE's support of the UConn Technology Park. And when the park opens in full, It'll be a place that brings together technology and talent, two things that make the world go round. So I applaud you for that, and I hope that some of today's graduates return to campus, to UConn, and use those labs and drive great outcomes. Today I want to focus on the real life lessons that enables a company like GE or an institution like UConn to be successful. Thomas Edison was our founder, and he once said that he looked at what the world needed and then proceeded to invent it. He was always on the lookout for the next innovation, the next big wave of productivity, ways that we could make ourselves better and the ways in which we could make the world better. That spirit still drives us today. We consider constant learning a cultural cornerstone, being out the lookout for ways to make the world better. But what does it mean for you? I know you're a diverse group by both discipline and degree, but I hope all of you stand united in eagerness to make your contribution, to take what you've learned here and look for ways to apply it. So I wanna talk about why that's true. I wanna discuss the world we live in, why as UConn graduates with advanced degrees, your contributions will be critical. Specifically, I, I think there's just five words that'll shape your future in the century we live in. Change, learn, risk, persist, and lead. I'll start by providing some context. What I see as I travel around the United States and the world. First, the United States is coming out of a deep recession that was a long time in coming. We built an, eco uh, an economy with too much leverage and too little innovation, and there's signs of recovery, but that recovery, as you know, is slow, and there's still great challenges. Um, we can't just shut our eyes and pretend we're in a difficult, uh, different time. Instead, we have to fix our economy and restore systems of competitiveness, and often we have to do that in the face of uncertainty. On the other side, there's dramatic growth in the emerging markets. There's renewed growth in China, 
and that has a positive rebound effect on resource-rich countries like Latin America and the Middle East. So if you're a business like GE, growth exists, but you have to hustle and chase it. To all of that, I could say that the future is very bright. Our population is increasing. There's more than 8 billion people on the planet by 2030. More than a billion consumers will join the middle class in the emerging markets. And by some estimates, by the end of the century, our urban population will almost double. There's 3 billion people living in cities. So let's put it all together and think about the world you're going to be entering. Volatile, uncertain, global, complicated, slower growth. Now, for those of you with student loans like I was, you might be concerned. But I don't mention all this to discourage you. On the contrary, I want to challenge you. I want to summon your determination, your optimism, your belief in better, because the world really awaits your leadership. So the 21st century is going to come to those that can get in front of the trends, move quickly. And I want to focus again on the five words I mentioned earlier that can provide lessons for companies, but also for individuals. First, accept and lead change. You know, we can't wait for the economy to stabilize. We can't wait for a time when there's more certainty. It used to be that all you had to do was manage momentum, but today you have to create your own future, and that means change. To give you an example, a few years ago, I never thought GE would be a software company. That was the domain of startups. Today, we see analytics and software as an imperative, and we're investing heavily to create what we consider to be the industrial internet. Over the last two decades, the internet has transformed media, communications, and advertising. And we're taking those same lessons and applying those to the industrial systems. With software, analytics, and low-cost sensing, we can connect big iron to brilliant machines. And that'll create cheaper systems, better healthcare providers, really everything. The idea is that if we can make our customers more productive, we can help society. So here we are, a 130-year-old company who can lead in data and analytics. And we're hiring the next generations to help us. But the old dogs, people like me, really are learning new tricks. So innovate in your lifetime, regardless of your profession. You must choose change. Two, to change, you must learn. Earlier I mentioned Thomas Edison. Someone asked Edison about a failure, and he famously replied, I haven't failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. The perspective remains a great lesson in constant learning. While I wouldn't recommend making a habit of failure, we can't allow, never allow ourselves to become paralyzed by fear of not reaching our intended outcome. If anything, perfection only tells us that our goals weren't set high enough. In my career, I've learned that no job is beneath me, and I remain humble by what I don't know. In 1989, I led GE's appliance service business. We had a catastrophic failure of our refrigerators and had to replace over three million compressors. This is one of the components in your refrigerator that keeps the food cold. To understand what went wrong and learn from the errors, I knew that I personally had to learn how to fix compressors. I had to get my hands dirty. So I did. I went into people's homes to fix refrigerators. And let me tell you, there's no better way to learn from failure to be humbled than for an applied math major to sit on someone's kitchen floor while the ice cream melts. But failure teaches you something. Every failure should motivate us to learn more, and every failure only brings you that much closer to the truth, to invention, to success, to an outcome that matters. So don't accept things at face value. Learn to touch things, meet people, visit new places around the world, see things through your own eyes. You have to be humble and curious. Today, you earned a degree from a great institution, but your learning is just beginning. So learning is powerful because it builds confidence. And if you are confident, you'll take risks. And the best leaders I've ever met are risk takers. In 1997, I was leading our healthcare division, and we wanted to build a big business in China, and our revenues were zero. So I spent three weeks in China, visited 200 hospitals in 25 cities with our local teams. And at the end, we designed a product line and a distribution process for the market. 
And today, because of a lot of people and a lot of hard work, GE has a $2 billion healthcare business in China. But it's not just our healthcare business. Over the last decade, our global revenues have more than tripled. Today, GE is the second largest exporter behind Boeing. And I can tell you firsthand, it's a big risk starting businesses around the world. You have to overcome both the cultural and trust challenges that often exist abroad, and quite honestly, you have to confront the fear that exists here at home. I understand that fear, especially at a time when unemployment remains higher than any of us would like. But we can't close our eyes and pretend the rest of the world doesn't exist or that we can't compete. And we can't afford to say, it's just too risky, I'm afraid to fail. Our next horizon is Africa, and I spent a lot of time there. We'll do $5 billion of business in Africa. They have wealth from natural resources, and they need everything GE sells. At the same time, it's a very volatile place. Is it risky? You bet. But the upside is huge. In your lifetime, you will learn that sitting still is failure. You must move forward. We must drive change, so we must be comfortable with risk. Number four, if you're a person that accepts the leadership challenge of risk and change, you must learn to be resilient. When you take a risk, you might not succeed, so you gotta get up and dust yourself off and keep going. And here, American manufacturing is a great example. For too long, our country bought into the notion that said we could more or less abandon manufacturing and become a services-only economy, and we could do that without any second thought or consequence. We looked at global costs and saw that materials were inexpensive, and the largest piece of cost was labor, and companies and their workers had terrible relationships. If we drove those costs down, we thought the rest would take care of itself. But we learned an important lesson. Manufacturing and our willingness to make things and compete is critical to our long-term competitiveness. Today, owning your own supply chain is a huge competitive advantage. That's what we've seen with our appliance business. We're in the process of bringing 1,000 jobs back to the US from Mexico and China to make appliances. And we're creating new manufacturing lines at that site for the first time in decades. There and at other GE businesses, we're innovating in new technology and techniques like 3D printing to renew American manufacturing. We're seeing confidence and competitiveness in our workforce. American workers are flexible and most like to compete. In many of our sites, we have self-directed and empowered teams. And in places where we work and compete together, Americans can beat anyone in the world. And as a result, since 2009, we've added 16 factories and 9,000 manufacturing workers in the United States. In addition, the US has a chance to become energy self-sufficient, and this adds to our competitiveness. And this is the result of resilience and innovation. So many of you are gonna find new careers in manufacturing, something we, we couldn't have guessed 10 or 20 years ago. But it was because of persistence and resilience and determination, not government policy. At GE, we make the best gen engines in the world. The new generations are 20% more fuel efficient than the ones they replace. And they're made with innovative new processes and they're made here in the United States. The US is a resilient country and we've been through a lot, but our companies have used this time to get better. And American business is more resilient and competitive than any time in our history. Lastly, remember that getting better, doing anything, really takes leadership. Today, in the era of 24-hour news and random blogging, it is easy to blame everyone for everything. But leadership is not about blame. It is about optimism and creating the way forward. In tough times, people don't want someone who will tell them, hey, you know, you're right. We're doomed. We might as well give up. Instead, they want leaders. Someone who can draw a play in the dirt and say, let's go do it. Someone who's willing to make a bold decision, even, even in the face of uncertainty. And that's what I want to lead you with. No matter what you do, whether you're a teacher or a business person or a nurse or anything you do, there will be opportunities to make a difference to the world and to each other to lead. But to seize those opportunities, understand that leadership is not a chore, it's a choice. 
It's an honor. It's about bringing people together and getting the job done. So don't shy away from tough problems. There's nothing like getting in the arena, competing, winning, getting dirty, making a lasting contribution, doing something that matters. I'm not here today because I've had a perfect career. Rather, my life has been about self-reflection, self-renewal, learning from failure, and a positive optimism that the future will be better than the past. And you know what? I've been criticized by the best of them. But I've learned from failure. Nothing has ever shaken my curiosity, my desire to take risks, or my will to try again. I've changed over my lifetime, but I've never lost sight of the type of person I want to be. I've never felt hard work, and I love playing on a great team who always puts the company first. We learn together, and we like to win together. So ca capture an optimistic and ethical framework for yourself. Be authentic, be true to yourself. People relate to other people who are comfortable in their own skin. Be transparent. It's no longer enough to just tell the truth. You must be open in spirit and conduct. Unify. The divisiveness of our recent past must end. People want to unite behind a mission. I often say that GE is a we company, not a me company. Our success is built on culture, and our culture is one where we enjoy working with each other and seeing our colleagues succeed. For me, the most satisfying accomplishment is to help others gain confidence and learn how to win for themselves. Now, I began by mentioning that both GE and UConn have a long and rich history that we must always be on the lookout to be better. I actually went back to the UConn of 1896 and found that the student newspaper of that day was called The Lookout. And I read an article from that year, and the author noted that we're all willing to accept opportunity when it brings fame. But then he asked, are we always as willing to accept and bear the responsibility which every opportunity brings? So what is that responsibility? I suppose we could look around and accept challenges as, uh, as insurmountable, or we can use them to inspire actions. To see the word lookout not as a warning, but as an invitation to make a difference on something that matters. So be on the lookout to change, to learn, to take risk, to persist, and to lead. And always strive to be better, and that way I know you'll make the world better. So congratulations to the UConn class of 2013, and good luck in the future. I'm very honored. Thank you.